and it's a wrap. Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time here, I'm Dana. I'm Art. Now, almost two years ago, we created an episode where we assembled a 12 by 20 permanent gazebo. Now, we recognize that not everyone has a backyard deck or even a backyard sizable enough to accommodate such a large gazebo. So, we partnered with Yolini in actually doing another assembly video, but more on a comparable size gazebo that would fit many average yards and back decks or porches. And this is gonna be an episode on how to assemble a 10 by 13. So this still does come in two boxes. Let's get to unboxing. We can show you the goods. Oh, this is some neat packaging. I think this is the roof. Look at that. So as you can see, all of the roof panels are stacked together and because they are not corrugated metal, they're very light, very easy to maneuver, and they're covered in protective plastic. Oh, you kind of went with yours first. There we go. Next, curtains. Screens. The rest of the large products that are going to be used for the assembly are all wrapped up and taped up exceptionally well. So at this point what we're going to end up doing is unwrapping it all and then setting that out in the yard by category, by letters and numbers and then we'll come back and show you all how we have it separated out. Especially once we find the instruction book and can organize it based off of the step-by-steps. Yeah, until then, everything else is just <laughs> kind of moving it out of the box. Yep. So we'll be right back. All right, while Dana is working on laying out the last bit of parts, I do want to go ahead and share a picture of this because a lot of folks may not actually see what these are or know what these are, but these are the roof panels. They are polycarbonate and they are not metal. However, there's a lot of actual bonuses to this because of the way that it's made. Uh, it is UV resistant. The panels themselves actually have air chambers that run through them. It is very, very durable. I'm trying to squeeze these and I can't completely squeeze it together. So incredibly tough, really looking at forward to getting this together and seeing how it compares to our metal roof. All right, so all the parts are laid out. We've got our hardware kit here. To make this easier, we actually laid all of this out in alphabetical order and then went through the checklist to be able to verify that we had the right quantity of every single part. All right, a couple of nice things that we discovered while unboxing everything is not only is each individual piece wrapped up with the styrofoam wrapping, but they already label all the parts on the outside. Now they do have these on the inside, but for those of us that are incredibly eager to start unwrapping and laying things out, they actually have you covered so you're not wondering, uh-oh, which pieces are these because all the letters were on the outside so smart thinking all right instruction manual actually give you 
few little drawings here of the actual sizes from all different angles so you can have a real good understanding from bottom to peak for clearance purposes. And going through the quantity list here, when it comes down to the individual hardware, the nuts and bolts, you've got the quantity listed, but they do provide extra in the packaging itself. All right, here's a little tech tip when you're starting to assemble all of this. Grab you some old cups, glasses, bowls, whatever it may be, and take out the hardware that you have. Group them individually into different holding devices so it's easier to be able to get those out each time you need them throughout the assembly process. Because getting them out of this can become a little bit frustrating when you're ready to go ahead and use them. Not only that, you'll be less likely to lose any of them. Absolutely. All right, first step is a wedding. Just kidding. We're actually going to be marrying the feet to the legs on the support posts for each of these. Uh, really easy process, but let's go ahead and get that started now. All right, pause for the cause here real quick. Something to call out. On letter J, which is the feet for the legs, you'll have the mounting tabs right here. Make sure before you start to mount the legs to them, they are all upright. Or you could be faced with one like this that just will not line up with those screws when you start. So get a pair of pliers and just straighten them back up. Now you'll have success. All right, the instructions actually don't call it out, but this is kind of where sawhorses or two equal sized chairs really come in handy when building the side spans. For the C and C1 panels, you're gonna use P to actually join them together. A tech tip on this, actually go ahead and insert the screws in on one side both top and bottom in order to be able to hold this joiner plate in place while we slide the other one together just like that now we can go ahead and put in the other screws on top and bottom now if you get a little ahead of yourself when joining these together the C's you will actually put a screw into this spot to marry them on the B's, you leave that out. The instructions do a good job of not showing the same images, but if you get a little ahead, you get on autopilot, which is very easy to do, you'll go ahead and put that in thinking that they are exactly the same and they are not. On the B's, you have to leave that open for a later step. All right, next step is mounting the legs to your cross beams. Best way to do this is actually lay these down to Just get them started. So two number twos going through this cross piece into the leg. One number one that will actually go inside there. Now for the next one, this is where you can actually flip this up. In order to access the next hole and this is a number one use the tool to actually screw it through the hole and into the leg. All right, one thing to keep in mind while you're assembling the side rails to the posts is that these tracks that you have need to be facing down, not up. These are the tracks that your curtains are going to be hung into. And if you have them facing up instead of down towards the ground, then all the screw holes will not line up. Okay, legs are attached to the long side spans. Now it's time to go ahead and set up the short side. Best if this is where you have a third person, they come in and help or just use ladders to kind of support the beams once to get everything installed. 
All right, a few things about the assembly on this when you're putting all of these together. It's incredibly important to make sure that all of your sidebars are square or these will not line up. So if you're having a hard time with them going in, recheck all the corners to make sure things are square. This little screw that goes in here is definitely a tricky one. Be careful not to actually drop that all the way down to the bottom and you will not be able to get it back out. So be careful there too. Another tip when adding these in is do not tighten them all down until you get them all in because you will end up having to maneuver either the side braces or the legs in order to get these holes lined up. Right, next are the actual corner support braces H and you are going to use two number ones on each of these. All right two things with Yolini over the other manufacturer gazebo that we installed before on the instructions. So we are in the curtain hanger stage and here you've got eight and eight and six and six so it actually tells you how many hangers per side to hang up in each track. Our other gazebo instructions did not have this and we had to do the math. The second thing about these curtain hangers that we love is, is actually the curtain hangers themselves. On our prior gazebo, we actually had to trim off what we call a little hanging chad on the plastic pieces that were not trimmed off during manufacturing. There are none for these and these actually glide a lot easier in the tracks. On this step with the curtain hangers, be sure not to forget adding in these clips, K1, and then these clips, V. If you miss these amongst being excited on the curtain hangers, you will end up having to remove things later on in the process. Friendly reminder there. Alright, next up is our corner pieces. These are K's. You'll notice you've got a ledge here that goes around. That actually slides into the groove on each side over here. And then we'll go ahead and screw them down. Alright, we've got two holes here on the top that we're going to use the Phillips screws for. And then the same thing, you have two on the bottom. All right, on to the next step. We are going to be installing D's, which are the corner roof arms, and actually screwing them to L, which is the center cap, before we raise this as one unit to install to the rest of the body.
All right, next step is now our E braces that will go in to help support the roof. All right, you gonna hand them to me? Yeah, I'll hand them to you. You need any of that? Which one you want first? Mm -hmm. One right here. Next up on the list is we have part letter M, and these are gonna be attached with the eye hooks, number five, and some of the number one screws as well there in the center. All right, the next step is gonna be where we install some upper roof braces. So these are gonna be parts G5, G6, N, and they're gonna attach in with some number one screws. Okay, with the G5, this sharp tip right here will actually go into this track. So you can line up the hole with that screw hole. So we'll get that in there, then, this is where it gets a little bit tricky and you think that something just doesn't fit, but it actually does. So you have your center hole here, and then on this side, just holding it there, it does not line up. So what you're gonna have to end up doing is actually bend this back out so you can put the same sharp tip into the same track, and then you'll push this back in. So now, Everything is going to end up lining up here, here, and then here once you get the other screws. Now, we're only going to point, put in these corner screws temporarily because we have to put center caps on them. So this is just simply enough to hold them there in place until we end up getting the long span of the roof support braces in, which will be G6. So while Art is working on that, let me take a minute to tell you about this episode's sponsor, Yolini. They not only have a line of gazebos available for you, they also have pergolas, patio furniture, and patio swings to accompany you through all of life's romantic seasons. So thank you, Yolini, for sponsoring this episode. All right, so these center caps are gonna screw in to overlap both of those braces. And it'll look just like that when it's done. All right, once you actually get the corner caps in, now you can go ahead and tighten in all of the rest of the side screws. All right, ladies and gentlemen, congratulations. You've made it this far to where we are now working on the upper roof panels. So in this step, We'll add in the R3, R4, and R5 panels. Then the next step will be the actual end caps to secure those in place. 
All right, in this step, make sure before you put these panels up, one, you have the correct side upwards. And the cool little protective coating gives you a clue to that. And before you put these in, let's go ahead and make sure that you peel off all the protective coating on both sides. Maybe a little difficult once you get it up in there. Next up, we have the end pieces that are going to hold all of our roof panels together. So there's going to be two G pieces, four G3 pieces, four G4 pieces, and we'll hold them all together with our end caps N and N1. Everything's going to be using our number one screw. One way that Art and I stay organized is we lay out our roof panels and brackets in the exact number and fashion as just as though they were going to be mounted that way we don't lose our place for these caps you have the actual trough or rails that will go on top and bottom of your roof panel so line that up slide it into the rail system also make sure the other side is completely inside of it as well because there could be a tab that's a little bit bent keeping it from sliding all the way in don't force it it should be very easy once it's in there all of your screw holes will line up we're not going to screw these in because each of those pieces will end up overlapping each other and then there will be end caps on those upper roof panels are in secured everything is in place with the end caps looking fantastic and clean hey friends welcome back for day two so yesterday the weather was fantastic the assembly was going incredibly smooth so we took a high number of breaks which is outside of the norm for us and uh, some of those are rather long with this video with the instructions if you remain laser focused we have 100 percent confidence that you can actually assemble this entire thing within one day so we're going to get back into the next couple of steps finish out the assembly in a rather quick fashion today so we can go ahead and enjoy the rest of this beautiful weather that we're having currently so let's get into it okay our next step is going to be inserting the roof panels Q and bracketing them with some F bars. So this roof will have three panels, an upper, a middle, and a lower. We are on the middle section. Okay. All right, with these panels, just go ahead and slide them through the track system. When you get all the way to the top, make sure you gently slide it into the top track. All right, here's the top track. Now, one thing to keep a close an eye on is anything that may be bent. Like we have a corner right here that's bent down some. So we'll just get our needle nose pliers. Just bend that up ever so slightly to give enough room for that panel to go in and still be nice and snug. With these roof panels, as you're working them up the tracks, once you have both sides into the track itself, as you're nearing the top, 
with one hand on top, one hand on the bottom, slowly push it into the top track all the way till it does not go back any further. If you're getting resistance, get it in to the first part of the track, pull it back out, adjust things, don't jam it in or you will crack or snap one of the panels themselves. Just be patient, it'll be all right. So the next step is actually putting in the F bars and you have a track on the top, a track on the bottom for each of the additional panels to go in. The instructions do call out this hole here is a water hole that needs to be facing upwards towards the roof. So very easily we'll slide each end into the track and over the ends of the panel that we have. As always with these, take your time. Don't jam it in there too fast. It should go nice and easy and snug and done. So for the non-corner retaining piece, you actually have to come in completely from the outside to get it into the track. The corners you won't have to do that for, but for this one you do. Once you get it in, then just slide it all the way up. And repeat everything else you've done on getting the panels into that bracket. Just like that. Alright, here's how they look once they're all in. All the way down. In our penultimate step to us finishing the roof, on the gazebo, we are going to complete the roof panels with all of the R's. Those you might not have to start all the way at the end, but I don't think I'm going to have to. Pretty close. outside of your Okay, so as we were putting in the lower roof panels, as we came around to the last one, we did notice as we started that the very tips were not completely flush. So as we went around, we knew that we were going to have to make some adjustments to figure out why. And it looks like this middle brace here is the culprit that we're going to end up pulling the panel back out, pulling the brace, make sure everything is fully seated, and then put everything back in. So sometimes this happens with these. You, everything seems to be the right place, the right fit, and then once you put in the final pieces, you recognize something's a little bit off and you got to backtrack a little bit. Okay, now we are finally flush and in good place for the end caps to go on in the last braces. We just had to pull this panel off and then readjust that brace, slide the last panel back in, and everything is good. All right, here's everything, how it looks, short of the final end caps and retaining braces that go along the very far outside. This looks fantastic. In the final step of the roof, we're putting in the end caps on the lower roof panels, which will be G, G1, and G2, and wrapping them all up with corner and connecting caps N and N1. All right, the end caps have a track for the roof panels to slide into. Very gently slide it onto the roof panels. You'll see these are going to line up with the holes. Ideally, the best way to do this, if it's just working yourself by yourself, 
go ahead and put in one of the screws to hold one end in place. The other end is going to overlap the other end caps. Now your end caps will overlap each other then your final piece will be this cap that will go over all and then screw in. The next step listed in the manual is to install the curtains followed by the screens. However, we're going to go ahead and anchor our gazebo in place, which in the manual is shown as the final step. We just don't want the curtains and screens in the way when we're trying to drill down into this deck. Now, Art's going to talk about the difference in the anchors provided with our kit versus what we're going to use, given that we are mounting our gazebo to a wooden deck. Yeleni is excellent at actually providing concrete anchors with this gazebo. Many others do not. This works great if you are going to be assembling this on top of a concrete pad. However, with our wood deck, we are going to use something a little bit different. With this wood deck, we have chosen to go with 9 16 threaded bolts with washers to hold it down. This is going to be entirely up to your own application, how you're wanting to mount it, where, what you're actually mounting it to, but we 100% recommend that you do ground this to whatever you have to avoid injury or gazebo damage from winds. All of the curtains arrive zippered together, but they're all basically the same. You can figure out which side goes where based on counting the grommets. If you remember in the earlier step, we put eight brackets on the long sides and only six on the short sides. One panel is going to Velcro to the center post with the sewn in loop. And you'll be able to count grommets out from that Velcro loop. The corner will have grommets that are sewn closer together rather than a standard distance further apart. So starting from the corner, we can count grommets and determine that this is our long side. Just like any standard curtain, you're going to insert your grommet into the open hook and move on to the next one. So for the screens, you're going to count grommets the exact same way you did for the curtains. Installation is the exact same. But what you should note is that the rear tracks in the back closest to the wall is going to be for the curtains and the front track closest to the inside of the gazebo is going to be for the screens. So one thing that's a little different is that the screens have a tie sewn into the bottom to go around the bottom of the post. So the curtain kind of gets in the way of that. I just gather it up, toss it off to one side so I can tie my screen to the post very, very tightly. And that's it. And it's a wrap. Literally, wrap. Because all the curtains are tied up and wrapped in place. Congratulations on completing the assembly of your Yolini gazebo. And thank you again to Yolini for becoming our channel's new sponsor and providing us with this beautiful gazebo to create this assembly video for you. If this video actually helped you out, give us a thumbs up. Let us know how we did so this can continue to be shared with others that are looking for the same content. And if you have questions or comments, kind words to share, be free to drop those below as well. We certainly appreciate those also. Thanks again for watching. Take care and stay safe. We'll see you soon. Bye. Bye.